Style Crew, welcome back to my channel. So today we will be making some crochet shorts. Thank you guys so much for supporting this channel. Like I just started, we're almost at 2,000 subscribers. I'm just so happy that you guys are just taking a liking to these videos. It just makes me so happy. Thank you guys so much for joining the Style Crew Style Gang. Gang, gang, gang. All right, so real serious note, we have to pick a name. Style Crew, Style Gang. Style something, style squat, style squat. Oh, I just came up with one style squat. We got a quick update of where I've been, what's been going on, so that you know there's no confusion. Um, also, the more things I'm gonna be doing on this channel. So, quick little brief update I have been in Ghana, Africa for all of like, I mean, it was like a month and some, it was like about a month altogether that I went and because of the lighting and the situation, I didn't have my equipment and all that stuff, I didn't make videos. I didn't make the videos that are on my Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, you will see that I had to do make makeup videos, makeup transformation videos. And I did, I couldn't do those because I didn't have my supplies and everything, my equipment and all that stuff. And I also couldn't make crochet videos because I wasn't crocheting while I was on vacation, one. And two, again, the whole lighting situation, the environment back making content we are almost at 2,000 subscribers I think I already said this but 2,000 subscribers even when I hit the first thousand I was so excited I couldn't even like get on the camera and just like share my excitement with you guys we are almost at 2,000 if you're new to this channel please 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 subscribe we would love to have you join the style gang style crew style squad whatever you guys want to call it I want to give you guys more of my personality so I want to be in front of the camera more like I'm not sure um, add more content to my YouTube channel and not make just crochet tutorials. I'm going to definitely keep making crochet tutorials. Don't get all up in a doozy. For me, Jada Money Traits, we learn how to do stuff. So why not bring you on my journey of learning stuff to show you that you too can learn how to do stuff even if you don't know how to do it, right? So I just want to record like hair videos and I also, also really, 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 really want to record makeup videos because it's a little obsession. No, I know. I know. Neil said it. Don't be a jack of many trades and a master of none. But wait. Really, I mastered it all. If I do, I mastered it all. So I'm like, he was talking about me. I don't think he was talking about me. But if he was, he was. That's all I'm just going to say. If he wasn't, he wasn't talking about me. He wasn't talking about me. All right, guys, so I was about to start rambling, but here are the shorts. Okay, we stand, we stand. Come on, booty clench. Let's get it. Okay, if you want to know how to make them, just keep watching. And yes, these are twerkable. Period. Yarn, measuring tape, hook, five millimeter, scissors. Come on, let's get it. Boom, baby. All right, we're going to start off. By tugging on the yarn, because I like to do that now, thin it out so it's not as thick. So I pull on it, and now I'm starting with a slip knot. So these are my measurements. Just keep them in mind for the rest of the shorts. But this is how I made my shorts. So I'm going to start off with a single crochet foundation chain. And what you want to do is chain two. Then you wanna insert your hook into the first chain and make sure you go through the front and the back loop, just like that. Two braid, two little loops on there. Pull through, wrap your yarn. Pull through only one hole, wrap your yarn again and pull through both. And that's how you make a single crochet foundation. So again, we're gonna go into the bottom, both bottoms. So now it's like both braids in a sense. Pull up a loop, wrap your yarn, go through the very first loop, wrap your yarn again, and go through both loops. This is called the single crochet foundation chain. So I did 118 single crochet foundation chains to start off my shorts because for me it gives a more stretchy feeling to the waistband of the shorts so that's why I prefer to use this or we can do the waistband method in my previous videos that also was a good stretch but I wanted to do them this way so this is the way I'm going to show you guys so here we are make 118 
and then come back. For me, when I use a measuring tape, I like to measure my piece to be six inches less than the waistband because it grows so, so, so much in my projects. All right, so now we're gonna join these two together. So what you wanna do is act like you're making another one. So insert through both of the braids, pull up a loop. Now we're gonna go find the end of our round where we're about to join. Make sure it's straight. So I thought that there was a, this was always foolproof, but I've also I've twisted it before. So make sure that it's straight. This is the way I like to make sure it's straight. I put my finger in between and make sure both braids are facing upward and everybody is going in the same direction. Do it again for extra measure because you don't want to start crocheting and then find out you're going the wrong way and have to do it again. So here we are. We're going to find that really begin that very, very first piece. It's kind of hanging out. Everybody has one. It's like the very first chain. We're going to insert through there. I like to hold the pieces of the yarn like tight because they can like get loose. And I don't really like that look. So I hold down the last piece slip stitch through the first one slip stitch through the second one wrap your yarn like how we've been doing this whole time and pull through both loops if you need to wash that again just rewind and then you're going to slip stitch into the very top of the first stitch slip stitch right on in there And now we have joined our foundation stitches in the round. So we're gonna chain up two. Turn our work. I like to pull all my knots taut. I don't like any holes. So not where the chain two is coming out of, but the next stitch over is where we're gonna start our round. So we're gonna wrap our yarn around and we're gonna do a double crochet. You know the drill. Double crochet all the way around until you get to the end. And then I'll catch you guys back when we get to the end. So here we go. So I know this is a bit premature, but there was nowhere else to put it. I worked four rows before my increase row. So just keep that in mind. Worked four rows before my fifth row, which was my increase row. All right, so we're coming up on the end of our round. I'm gonna do my last double crochets. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you don't put this extra double crochet in at the end and you directly slip stitch. So where the chain two was coming out of, if you don't put a stitch there and you directly slip stitch, right in there, there's always like this hole that I personally don't like. I mean, if you don't have a problem with it, that's fine. You can keep it like that. But I just like to go back and put an extra stitch where our beginning is coming out of. I know it may be weird, but it's worked and the seam looks fine to me. So I do it like that. I slip stitch through the top, I chain two, and I turn my work around. So that makes me flip the project, constantly flip the project inside out, like both ways. And then you just start double crocheting going the opposite way. So it may seem like I'm going to be talking fast, but I had to get this out. So I put four increases in every row that I did. So the way I did it was 118 minus four, took that number divided by four. That's how much I'm going to put in between my stitch markers. So 28 stitches. And because the back is kind of split up into two where your seam is, I divided 28 by two. So I did 14, put a stitch marker there. Here we're coming up on the 14th stitch. Now we're gonna place two double crochets where our stitch marker is. And then we're going to place 28 stitches in between this stitch marker and the next one. And we're gonna put a double crochet in that one. And then it's gonna get to the end where we only have 14 left. And yeah, it makes 28, 14 plus 14 is 28. So now you're gonna do two regular rows just like that. 
and then I'm going to show you how I increase on top of my previous increases like I don't count them I kind of just feel for them and place them because that's how I like to do it so I'm going to show you kind of my methodology with this so chain two, turn my work, going back down the other way to go and catch our, our increase stitch. So again, I split the back because the seam is like right in the middle of the 28 and I wanted everything to be even. So that's why I have 14 in the first part and then 14 coming up the other way so that when they meet it's 28 makes sense boom so now we are at where the chain two is you can see i'm using my finger to drag up where you know it makes sense to me so that's not where we're going to place a chain two you see we're going to go to the second stitch in our chain two and follow that up the chain it kind of does this like a little zigzag thing and then lands in a stitch and then i place two double crochets in there and i just do that so if you get it like roughly in the same area it should be okay um if you want to count them up to make sure but maybe i don't count i just go and i just do because we don't got time to be doing that in somebody else's club <laughs> Again, so I'm showing you a closer look of what I'm doing. See, they kind of drag in different directions and there's always one in the middle. And that's where I always place my chain two. So because we're going back and forth, it's like when I do it this way, they're offsetting each other and making like some weird straight stitch with the increases. Probably doesn't make sense, but I see it. And if you look closely, you can see it too. So. They're like offsetting each other in a way because we keep like flipping around. So I worked a total of 21 rows. I increased five times every two rows and I got 21 rows. So my last row was a normal row. And usually from my waist to the crotch area, I always like to measure about seven, seven and a half because I always just wanna make sure that everything is snatched up. You know, like I don't like my my shorts to be too low. I don't want them to be too high. So I found that seven, seven and a half is what works for most individuals. And that's why I do mine like that. So now I'm gonna chain up nine. We're about to start splitting the shorts and this can get kind of confusing. So please pay attention and follow along with me. So we're gonna chain up nine, just like that second chain from the hook we're gonna start double crocheting all the way down but before we do that we want to match up that middle to where I think then about the next middle is pull up that stitch and then we're gonna count so we actually have to count for this one because we want both pant legs to be split evenly. So this is how I split my legs. I put them together and I count by two because even though we gotta count, we can count faster than counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I count by two. All right, so I got 65 going that way. And then I got 67 going the next way. So that means that the 67 side has to move over one just like that so that it would be 66 on both sides see make a slip knot reattach your yarn where your stitch marker is and then we're going to chain up nine on that side too but we're going to fasten that piece off just like that trust the process wrap your yarn second chain from hook work it all the way down make sure that you are going to your left basically you're turning the pants around when you get to the end like that turn it around you're supposed to encounter a really small piece that you have to force your stitch into just like that and that's how you know you're going the right way if you don't encounter that piece you're going the wrong way 
exactly off the very first stitch that you will see. And then you are going to crochet all the way down until you reach the chain stitches on the other side. Coming up on the chain stitches, where we placed it, I like to put a stitch there too because we don't like no holes. We don't want any holes anywhere. Every time I see a hole, I always try to add a stitch because I don't want any holes. And then here we go. Brand new stitches are really hard to get your hook into, but we find a way, yeah? And pull that taunt. See, I was dragging, pull it taunt. No holes. See, there's a, a hidden, I was gonna put it right there, but there's a hidden stitch. Had to force my way into that one too. No holes. And the rest after this was pretty easy. You have a total of nine this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And nine. I'm sorry I didn't show you. So now we are going to place a single crochet going across the top of that chain one because we have to get to the other side and make the other side of the pant leg so chain one not really turn your work but you know flip it to a way you can crochet and going through the back side is kind of hard but try your best there's a stitch for every double crochet on the bottom so they're all supposed to be even and they're all supposed to match up and when you get to this part where it starts to divide. We're getting to the part where it starts to divide. I place another stitch in that hole. See how I was about to skip it? But it was going to cause a hole. And I was going to see the hole. And I don't like holes. See a hole? Pull it out. Put it where it wouldn't cause a hole. So right there, that space. And then crochet all the way down again to get to the other side. All right, so we're coming up on the other side of our first part of the crotch. Whew! We made it. This part can get very confusing. I hope it doesn't get confusing. I hope you can follow along with my words and the images because we have to do some things. And honestly, it's personal preference, but I prefer this way because I have some kind of OCD about my stitches. Like they all just have to be looking like in unison. You know what I'm saying? So there's a, a piece at the end, at the very end. Yeah, out of frame kind of, but you can see. You need to put a stitch there. It's very imperative. It makes the eight, okay? It looks weird, but you have to do it. Chain two and you turn your work. So now we're turning our work, we're going the opposite way because we want our stitches to be pointing to the left, the, par the bar that's in the middle, you want it to be, always be pointing to the left and that's how you know you're going the right way. So now we're back, we worked our way all the way down. So now that we've worked our way down this way, we're gonna get into our last stitches. And you're not gonna chain two and turn around, you're gonna chain one and you're gonna go across the top of these stitches to get to the other side because right now we have to get to the other side so that everything looks the same. Cause you have two going this way, you have one going in the other direction. So now you need two going in the other direction. Then you're gonna have three going one way, and then you're gonna have three going the, the other direction. Yeah, it's all gonna match up. So I single crochet across the top, if you can see. 
I single crochet across the top wherever I feel for it because there's no really defined stitches. Instead of chaining two for a bigger hole, I just chain one. Wrap my yarn and start crocheting down. Crochet all the way down till you get to the other end. And then I'll catch you guys there because we're going to do something again. Don't neglect your corner stitches. They need love too. All right, so check this out. We're gonna go across the top again, but because we already went this direction for the right and the left side, we're gonna go across the top again but we're not going to start our next row of double crochet just yet. We're gonna go across all the top stitches. If it's really hard to get through the little ones, just put them through the big, the big holes at the bottom. This is the crotch area. Hopefully if nobody opens up their legs, they won't see the holes in the bottom and you know, people aren't just playing peekaboo in that area. So single crochet across the top. I said please watch the full clip so you don't just start chaining one and going back down the other way you're going to chain one you're going to turn your work because we want our the previous row stitches to not have a bar in them if that makes sense because in doing that it changes the direction of our stitches and we don't want to do that so we had to go one way come back the other way so that our directions would be correct so now we're gonna chain one now we're gonna double crochet see how the top stitches don't look like the bottom stitches they're supposed to look different every row is supposed to look different they're supposed to be opposite of each other they're not supposed to be going the same way so now we're here we came back down the other side. And what we're going to do is now we're going to chain one here and go across the top again because we still need to be facing this, the way that we have been facing for the other side of the short to make it symmetrical. I think that I don't, I don't know if I'm the only person that does it like this, but I like this way. I wanted to show you guys this way. This is the way I made my shorts that you guys have been requesting. So like, I just really hope this is not confusing. And if it is confusing, just leave me some comments and I'll be more than willing to clarify. But we're going to go across the top just like that. We're gonna chain one and now we're gonna go into that first stitch yep really hope that it's making sense because if you look the bottom stitch is going the opposite way than the top stitch and that's what we want that means we're going the right way like I've been saying so here we are coming up on the other side. And even though that is not a, these are not stitches, I'm going to make them stitches because they have to be somewhat in the same, the same size, at least somewhat the same size so that we can join the two flaps together symmetrically. Whoa. Whoa, was that even English? <laughs> Chain one. We're gonna join these together. Yeah, we have a double crochet there. We're not gonna mind that. We're gonna do what we've been doing, chaining one, going through the double crochet. So we're gonna put two single crochets in that double crochet when we're joining, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about when we join it. So find the ends, 
make sure you're on the wrong you're joining on the wrong side because when you turn it inside out you want all your nice stitches to be at the top slip stitch the end piece together then we're going to single crochet all the way down this so again you got to go through the double crochet because you know that's what we ended on one top will have um, single crochets also will make it easier you'll see it when you do it then you're gonna single crochet all the way down because both of the single crochets match up on each side so I immediately start my pant legs I chain two look to my left and place a double crochet going that way so here you can see what I'm talking about how this little piece in the middle is pointing to the left and how below it they don't have a piece in the middle that's how you know you're going the right way so you want every other row to look like that same old deal with the same seam thing placing the stitch that is coming out of chain two turn your work and that's as simple. I didn't increase. I didn't decrease. I didn't do anything else. And I just did 10 rows of this. Reattached to the next side. Did 10 rows there too. And I'm going to show you how I reattached to the next side. But it's really just this in the rounds. Here we are making a slip knot. Handy dandy slip knot. Inserting our hook. Finding a stitch on the opposite side. Making sure the previous row doesn't have a bar facing to the left. We're still inside. We're still on the inside seam. We haven't flipped it inside out yet. Chain two, wrap your yarn, start crocheting. See that left bar? Previous bottom row doesn't have that left bar. It's the only way I can know, I can explain it. They just should not be going in the same direction. And you're gonna go all the way around. And you're gonna get it to look like this. Look at that. Look at that. We made some shorts. They're probably they're pretty easy peasy once you get over the crotch area part. Pretty, pretty simple. All right, so we are flipping our shorts inside out. We're yarning in our tails, weaving in our tails, whatever you want to call it. Least favorite part of crocheting. Look at that seam though. Do you see it though? And even if you see it, is it curving? Is it is it acting wonky? Or is it meshing into the crowd? You know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're gonna have a seam, but look at that. But let's finesse it, you know what I'm saying? Because we're going to have it, so let's finesse it. Like we just did. <laughs> like we just did. Okay. <laughs> Back to business. Make a slip knot. Make a chain of 200. And we're going to use this as our drawstring. So again, chain 200. We're going to fasten it off. And we're going to weave it through. So I'm just going to show you guys how I like to weave it through. I count between four, three, four stitches. In. Through the bottom. Through the top. You know, just take it around just like that. And when it's all said and done, you will have these beautiful shorts. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!